Spirit of the Lord rest upon me. The Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of wisdom. The Spirit of understanding. The Spirit of counsel. The Spirit of might. The Spirit of knowledge. And the fear of the Lord. Amen. God richly bless you for coming. You will not be disappointed. Amen. If you were the only one to come, you are to be valued. You are not just in the number. You are to be valued. Amen. Glory be to God. The queens and the keys, their high castles, their palaces, right up to the villages, the hamlets of villages, the poorest people. Poor. Because we are always offending and are always offended. It's a universal addition. Everybody has been there before. So, it's very difficult. It's something that is a foundation of the church. Christ, Christ laid down his life for us, gave us, took upon himself the, the form of a servant, died a shameful death in order for us to be saved. There are 143 this word of forgiveness only in the New Testament. It has 143 mentioned or in places. Yet it's very difficult for the church, for families, for police, everywhere you go, everybody is suffering from this diabolic trap. Men and women of God don't address it. They don't preach it. We hardly preach forgiveness because we are all in it. Hallelujah. It's, it's very difficult to address something that is affecting you. Let's, let's call speed the spirit, no agricultural instrument. Hallelujah. We are all there. So we, we cannot pretend. So many are pretending you don't go there at all. A psychologist said he was invited to come to a church to talk about forgiveness. He said, this is strange. Why are you inviting me? Your Lord Jesus Christ left a pattern for you to follow. Why? He said, it's so difficult. So I would rather have a stranger to come and talk about it. All men of God, I know I want to buy. Nobody is ready to address because one way or the other, each and every one is in there. It's in the same suit. Everybody has got a testimony. Everybody <laughs> has got an experience. That's not easy. Hallelujah. We started by talking about the diabolic nature of revenge. And our last session also, we talk about the analogy of the forgiving God, which we dramatize it here. The judge or the king uh, who so much a friend, a servant owned him and he couldn't pay, so he lose him and let him go. The word forgive to forgive in the Hebrew means on time, on time. So when the, the servant could not pay, he ordered that they should on time him and let him go. First time he said, Pay me all. As he pleaded with him, he said, Let him go. So he untied him to lose him. I made you to understand that when you, you are holding somebody, you are also in the same soup, the same difficulty, the same chains you connect yourself to. It. Hallelujah. It's not something easy, it takes away your joy, your peace, and your calmness. So he lose him and let him go. When he left, found another friend who owned him. Comparing to that, if you compare to that, it's like a pinhead. He let him go. He held the entire family and put them into prison. Until the law came to his son, he brought the issue to the Lord or the king and he said, let him be put into prison until he pays it all. So beloved, if you cannot forgive, you you make yourself an enemy to yourself. You take God's place if you cannot forgive. Because forgiveness is 
God who has forgiven us so much and he has a grace to give to you and I and if we want to take it upon ourselves we cannot make it we miss it Hallelujah. so he put him into prison and we learned so much we came to Joseph as a classic example who his brothers sold him into slavery hated him with all hatred, venom, poison that they hated him to the core until they put him into a beat, sold him, etc. And then he ended up in prison. And there God was with him. And afterwards, he became the prime minister because he had a forgiving spirit. Amen. Amen. Joseph had a forgiving spirit. We read from the scriptures. Genesis chapter 50 verse 15 to 20. Genesis. We learn that he himself, he himself forgave them. Then the father died and they started cooking up story. Let's go and tell Joseph that this is what daddy said. He should drop every child. Hallelujah. Amen. When Joseph's brother saw that their father was dead, they said, perhaps Joseph will hate us and may actually repay us for all the evil which we did to him. It's their conscience, their own mind, their guilt. They live with it. Many of us live with guilt. Many of us we live with guilt. Even if we have been forgiven, many of us live with We are even guilty of the dead, what have happened to or holding on against the dead. So they sent messengers to Joseph, saying, before your father died, before your father died, not our father, died, he, he commanded saying, he commanded saying, if that the father found it so befitting, why didn't he tell Joseph himself? And you are coming to tell Joseph that your father commanded. Hallelujah. So there's some messages to Joseph. Before your father died, he commanded saying, he commanded saying, that you shall say to Joseph, I beg you please forgive the trespasses of your brothers and their sins, for they, they did evil to you. Now please forgive the trespasses of the servants of God Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Why did he weep? Go on. Then his brothers also went and fell down before his face. And they said, Behold, we are your servants. Joseph said to them, Do not be afraid, for I am. Am I in the place of God? Point I want us to learn from there. The lesson is this. When we cannot forgive, we take God's place. You say, God, move from your seat and let me sit there and judge. You will not judge according to my expectation. How I want to deal with this person or this group of people, you will not do it that way. So you want to take God's place. And anybody who wants to take God's place becomes the devil. Yes. You remember? The devil took God's place said, I will be like the most high. I'll sit in his chair and I'll be more than the most high. I want to be like God. I want to be like God. If you cannot forgive, if you cannot let go, you have made yourself God. He said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. I will repay. Vengeance is mine. It's difficult. Don't get me wrong. It's very difficult when you are wounded when you are hurt. When people have had no falsehood against you. All kinds of things against you. Fabrication, all kinds of things against you. It's not easy. When you are jilted, when you are torn up, all kinds of evil. It's not easy. But there's a process to are going to go through and see. So now, Joseph said, I'm not in my in God's place. I cannot do it. If you meant it for evil, am my God meant it for good? He saw God's hand in it, in the situation. He saw me. He saw it. You meant it for evil, but my daddy meant it for good. To save lives. You attempt to go through some situations, circumstances, difficult times, because God is using it to toughen you. God is using it to train you, to, to lighten something, to take up the dross from your life. If Joseph 
was coming straight from the father's palace, the father's house, and to become a prime minister would have blown it. He didn't have any training. He was a spoiled child. So God used that hatred of his brothers, the malice of his brothers, to bring him to the place of God, where God has ordained him to be. He used it to train him, perfect him and strengthen him and put a character in him. Amen. A character. Who you supposed to be. The higher your promotion, the higher your devils. <laughs> if God cannot trust you with little things, he will not trust you with any promotion because you blow it. Do you get me? If God could not trust Joseph with Mrs. Potiphar, he had every, every freedom, every chance, every opportunity to have lied with the woman. Yet, he said, how can I do such a wicked thing against God? I cannot do that. So, God tested him. The enemy brought that, brought Mrs. Potiphar, but God tested him. And the guy passed it. He passed the test. Amen. The temptation the enemy brought, God used it as a test and he passed it. So God was able to trust Joseph that if I put him there, prime minister, in this foreign land, he will not misbehave. Because he got to a state of maturity. Joseph needed to mature. It says, it's a dangerous thing to promote somebody, somebody to succeed before he's ready. He messes up situations. If somebody is not mature enough and you promote him, he become, there will be so much casualties. Hallelujah. So God trusted him. Now he became prime minister. And we learned that Joseph said, I'm not in the place of God. I can't take God's place. I'm only a man. It's by his grace he has brought me thus far. I could have died. When I was in chains, I could have died. But God took care of me and brought me thus far. How can a Hebrew, a slave, to become a prime minister? Joseph had a forgiving heart. Amen. And I pray and challenge each and every one of us that we emulate it. Praise the Lord. So that is what we learned. Uh, we, we ended last week with it. Amen. Today, I want today's, I want to entitle today's one with, as um, offense in the church or the church and offenses. The church. In the book, I put it the kingdom and offenses. But the church is a byproduct of the kingdom. So today we want to address, we want to talk about things happening in the church. Offenses in the church. Offenses in the church. Before we, we became born again, we thought we would have been, the church was a ground for peace, oneness, love, everything. But we did not see it that way. We found out that even in the church was worse than outside. It was worse. Why? Because we cannot address it. Because we keep on hurting one another. We, we keep on offending one another. Today, we want to address it. Look at examples. We look at uh, um, classic ones in our days. Things that have happened, etc. The church of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God wants his people to, to be like him. First Peter 2. The book of First Peter chapter 2, 21 to 23. First Peter chapter 2, 21. He has left an example for you and I to follow. That's what we need to understand. He wants us to emulate. Want us to copy. Live as he lived. 21 to 23. Listen to this. He said, Therefore. The first one talks, therefore, lay aside all malice. So you can read the whole chapter. For this you were called, you were called to forgive one another. Because Christ also suffered for us. Leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. So God did not leave us without a pattern 
without uh, a role model, without things he laid down, he left in his word. Suffered for us, leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. You should follow his steps. Who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth. 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously. Look at it. If the church can emulate this, God is a God of principles, a God of pep. Um, he's not a respecter of persons, but he's a respecter of principles. He does not want anybody to take one another for granted. He doesn't. But he said, for you to move forward, this is what you need to do. He took our sins upon himself. He did not revile. Jesus did not penalize Judas. Judas committed suicide. He said, you Judas, I swear, Judas, you shall die. He didn't say anything. He knew it. He was, yet he drafted him in. And when he broke him, he committed suicide. He did not penalize him. Judas himself killed himself. So, if we leave it in the hands of God, the church, there's bickering, there's rancor, there's acrimony, there's strife, there's hostility, there's enmity, there's venom in the body of Christ. I told you, pastors among pastors, teachers among teachers, I mean, ministers outside, everywhere. There are some people, because you put somebody on your flyer, you will not come around. Even if it's a, a national thing you are doing, he will not come. Why? Because he had a conflict with another. And it must be stopped. We cannot get the entire revival if we continue like this. It's something that grieves. It's, it's a primary way to grieve the Holy Spirit. To, to grieve him. That he, he will redraw us. We don't see the manifestation of his power and his glory among us. Why? Because there's so much conflict, anger, everything going on. It does not please the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Each and every one of us, he has called us and we have things that we need to study to know who he is, what he has done for us. When Jesus was being revived, as he's saying that, he spat on him, they did all kinds of things over him. They, they, they all kinds of things, called him names, you are mad, you are this, all kinds of names. I would say he did not open his mouth. The same people he was going to raise, the people attacked him so much. He said, crucify him. They took him on the cross. He was crucified. He did not fight back. Didn't he have the power? He had the ability. He had what he takes. But he, he wouldn't have been glorified if he had fought in the battle by him, for himself. He said, I can command angels, thousands to take over and fight this battle. He got into the garden and said, thy will be done, the garden of Gethsemane. It became so much unbearable that he said, thy will be done. If possible, take away this cup from me. If possible. Not my will, but thine will be done. Thy will be done. Then in the garden, they came and arrested him. He stood before Pilate, he stood before um, different went to court from Pontius Pilate to Herod, up and down, back and forward. He went all there. Called him names. He was naked. He, he, we saw his battered body. That the cross, you see those clean body on it. That's not how he died, though. If you study the Bible very well, and did, you do Bible history, you see how his body was mutilated. That is what we could, the passion, that's what really happened. The passion. His body was mutilated beyond visage, according to Isaiah 53. Yet, the Bible says, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And he opened not his mouth. He wanted us to emulate. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Years ago, we, we, as we were, we bought this building and we were preparing to move in here. The enemy stirred up contention, confusion, etc. About, um, just because of this building. People who loved ourselves, cared for one another, people who have loved, people we have really named their children after us, all kinds of things. We were so much was standing for one another. Same people the enemy pushed, stirred up for us to lose this building. I cannot go into details. The issue that happened, the things. The things that generated out of it because of Tottenham Tabernacle. So much rancor, hostility from houses to houses. The enemy used vessels to peddle falsehood against us. Things that had no element of truth. Beloved, it was a warfare, serious warfare to lose this building. Some people even advise us, why don't you leave it and go your way? Go and do your business. Why you waste your time? Or why do you, don't you do this? So many counsel came. So many advice came. We fasted and prayed. I grew lean like this. To lose Tottenham Tabernacle. We have sacrificed. We have, we have done all kinds of things. Prayers, etc. And you go to a point that I must tell you and because we are him we were so bitter I personally I was bitter I was seen I was so bitter I was so bitter because looking at the people who are trying to put this thing together and to, for us to lose their own confession we will make sure they lose Tottenham Tabernacle we will make sure how can you want your church to lose a property and it became, so, it became so beyond human comprehension. We could not phantom how people we have loved before for the kingdom agenda. You want to destroy the work of God. So, I must confess I was bitter. Sleepless nights. Anger. Letters sent to our house. Recorded delivery. Threatening. Giving us to the police. Giving us to charity commission, giving us to so many places, sent us to many places. Went to even Scotland Yard. Believers, people claim what they are believers. It went so bad. When a, 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 a somebody knocked at our door, then I, the adrenaline in me begin to step up. I mean, like there's danger coming. Recorded delivery. We have given you to this. They reported that um, we've been using this place and it's not fit for us to use. They called the, the, the council, they reported the council, they brought us a copy. Anything they do, they bring us a copy. In order to intimidate us that we do not use this place. And all day, it went on for three years. Our accounts were frozen by charity commission. So many times. People you have loved. There was no point the enemy used, allowing themselves to be used by the enemy to destroy the work of God. But one day God spoke to me. I wept in the night. I wept. I wept. I wept. I said, why God? I was doing my business and this and that. Why? The Lord says, looking at the situation and the circumstance, if you don't drop every charge against them, you lose the building. Forgive them completely. Clear your heart. It is my building. It's not yours. It is my heart. It is not yours. So drop every charge. Forgive each and every one of them. Clear your heart. And as you clear your heart, I, the battle is mine. I will fight it. And lo and behold, God fought the battle. Yeah. That's why you see this man. That 
be so much contention against it. These days, where can you get this building? throwing them out. Some people taking their rent, not paying the mortgage, and they throw them out. So many things going on to get a place of worship. And I knew the enemy fought it. But because the Lord says to be bitter is like drinking a glass of poison and sitting down expecting to see your enemies dead. They will not die. You will die. Beloved, I grew lean like this. Went to America. I think there was something, one of the graduation or something. I went to America. And as my children, they both met me at the airport. What's the matter, mommy? Leave this work. Leave and go. Leave it. They became so sad. Mommy, you shrank. What's this? I knew the battle we were going through. We were going through. And as God spoke, we listened. It wasn't easy. I said, it wasn't easy. I said, if you drink the glass of poison yourself, it is you who will die. Your, your, your enemies, your perpetrators, your offenders will not die. Probably they are somewhere. They move from house to houses to assassinate us. People will call us. So, so and so were in our house. They came and said this and this about you. And some will fight. Some, all kinds of falsehood. But God said, let them go. Lose yourself. As you lose yourself, I'll pick up the battle. As you hand it over to me, I'll fight the battle. Precious audience, I trust you have been deeply blessed and totally transformed in your mind because you have heard, have heard this message. Watch this forgiveness of sin. Precious one, to forgive is like releasing someone from prison. And at the end of the day, you discover that you were the prisoner. You need this emotional, emotional healing. Make a conscious effort to let go of the past, of any bitterness, any rancor in your heart. Let go. And I trust by the grace of God, you have your, you sense your peace and your joy in the name of Jesus. So you say this after me, Father, grant me the grace to forgive and let go of everyone who has hurt me and have wounded me. And I lose myself from every shackle by your grace. In Jesus' name. And those who listen to me who don't know Jesus, this opportunity is for you. Confess Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Come unto Jesus, and then you can live again. Confess him as your Lord and personal Savior. Come along to Christ the kingdom in your place, where the word of God is preached and taught, and the love of God is shared abroad. Bless you. Information underneath gets intact and come. If you need counseling, we are there for you. Bless you. Get the book, drop the charges. Bless you.